Hello, I am Tamara, and today we are going to be making advent calendars. My boys, I buy them advent calendars every year, and to be honest, I'm kind of getting tired of buying them. So I thought I would make some advent calendars. This one here I made out of fat quarters, and this one here I made out of a set of charm squares. And then you'll need two squares for the back. And the reason why we add squares onto the back of these advent calendars is so you can slide dowels into your advent calendar instead of using the hangers. So just go to your local hardware store, find a thin dowel, and you can either get them to cut it or you can bring it home and just cut it to the size that you need. The next thing you need to know about these advent calendars is the fact that I did these numbers on all of the pockets and I appliqued the numbers. But if that is too much for you, I am a beginner sewing channel, so I thought of you beginners. You don't have to applique numbers onto your advent calendar. There's a few different things that you could do instead. You could go buy fabric markers, and I will link to a few in the description down below, and you could just hand write with the fabric markers onto each individual pocket. And if you don't wanna do that, then another option I have for you, and I've seen this a bunch on Pinterest, people will get little clips and they'll write the numbers on little pieces of paper, and then they'll just clip the number to each individual pocket with adorable little craft clips, which I will also link in the description down below. What I suggest you do is just take a screenshot of this cut list so you can refer back to it as you are sewing throughout your project. The main thing that you need to decide is are you going to use charm squares or do you just want to use fat quarters? You'll also need a lining fabric. It can be whatever fabric you have on hand. I just used a plain white fabric. You'll need fabric for the back and for the front of the back panel and that panel you will be quilting. I like to quilt it on a fusible fleece but you can easily quilt it over a regular batting as well and then of course you'll need binding and if you choose to do the applique you will need heat and bond and you will need extra fabric whether it's a fat quarter or a scrap piece of fabric for your numbers. All right so let's jump into this tutorial and get sewing. So I suggest you take your large front piece of fabric, the large back piece of fabric and the the batting whichever you chose and just quilt all three of those layers together. If you've never quilted before I will link to my table runner tutorial down below and I will walk you through the entire process of how to quilt a piece of fabric like this. For most of this tutorial I am going to be showing you how I did it with the charm squares and then at the very end of this tutorial I'll show you the little changes that I ended up making to use the fat quarter strips. So I will have that time stamped in the description below but I I do suggest you watch the whole tutorial on through before going to your fat quarters as well. So the first step we are going to do is lay out four charm squares and we're going to lay out six rows of four. And you'll just move those squares around until you're happy with the order of the squares. And now if you are choosing to applique all of the numbers onto your squares, now is the time for that. So what you'll do is you will trace all of the numbers, which I have a PDF linked in the description down below. And in that PDF is all of the numbers you'll need to be able to trace out. But what you'll do is you will make sure that you trace all these numbers out in a mirrored image on your heat and bond. That way when you transfer that heat and bond onto your piece of scrap fabric then you will be able to cut out all of those numbers and they will end up facing the correct way once you've cut out all of your numbers and I suggest that you just follow the heat and bond instructions to make sure you do this correctly a few tips of course the mirrored image make sure you remember that and don't hold your iron on top of your little numbers for too long I'll hold it there between three to five seconds and that will be enough to adhere that glue to to the fabric. Then it's time to cut out all of your numbers. Now to do this I found using a nice pair of sharp crafting scissors worked best. I also used this small rotary cutter to cut little slits in to the smaller circles of the O or the number eight and then I used my crafting scissors to cut within there to just to get those little circles out. But you can do that in whatever way will work best for you. I will have both of these tools linked in the description below 
because I really do love them and I highly recommend them. And now it is time to attach your numbers to your fabric. To do this, just peel off the little paper backing of your heat and bond numbers and then lay that number centered on that square. I like to use my measuring gauge to make sure I've centered my numbers correctly. I tried to measure all of my numbers so that they were an inch and a half up towards the middle. And once you have that number exactly where you want it, then just press it in place and just hold your iron over that number for between three to five seconds and it should be glued nicely in place. Then take all of these little squares and bring them to your sewing machine. I liked to use a zigzag stitch and that zigzag stitch just allowed me to stitch them neatly in place without too much fuss. Of course, there are other stitches that you can use to applique these numbers in place and I do have a tutorial for that which I will also link in the description below if you want a more detailed look at how to applique stitches. Then lay all of your squares out in the order that they belong and what we will do is we will be stitching all four squares together. So you'll end up with six rows of these squares and sew them together using a quarter inch seam allowance. Then press all of those seams open. Now you can take all six of these rows, lay them right side down on your lining and stitch stitch along the top using a quarter inch seam allowance once again. Then trim off the side edges of the lining so that it lines up with the squares. Then press that center seam flat towards the lining's edge and then you can fold this in half so that it's right sides facing out. And then just press along that sewn edge once again. Throw some clips on there so that it can cool in place before sewing another quarter inch seam across that top edge. Now take all six of these strips and just trim along the bottom's edge, getting rid of any excess lining that might be poking out or straightening up the squares if you found that they kind of went wonky while you were sewing all of your squares together. You will need the bottom edge to be a nice straight edge because we will be using that as our guide as we start sewing our rows onto our backing panel. Now grab your backing panel and just cut a straight edge along the bottom of the panel itself. Then take your rows in order from the bottom row and you will slowly move your way up. So take the row that is 21, 22, 23, and 24 and line it along the center and along the bottom's edge. Then just clip it in place and sew a scant quarter inch seam along that bottom's edge. A scant quarter inch seam is just a little bit smaller than a quarter inch seam. You could go an eighth of an inch as well if you'd prefer. And once your bottom panel is sewn in place, then grab a ruler and draw a line one and a half inches up from the top edge of your bottom panel. That line is where you will take your second panel and you will lay it right side face down along the bottom edge of the line you just drew. Pin that in place and then sew a quarter inch seam along that top edge, which will be the bottom of your pocket eventually. Once that seam is sewn, then you can flip that pocket upwards and you can either press it with your fingers or you can press Press it with your iron to get it nicely in place, measuring one and a half inches up from that top edge each time. And then you're going to pin along that bottom edge and you will sew another quarter inch seam across that bottom edge. You will continue this process with the rest of the panels as well. And as you are adding your panels, constantly check to make sure that center seam on your charm square is lining up with the previous center seam. That way you're not adding your panels and they're slowly stair stepping up towards the top. You want all of your panels to be neatly lined up along all of those seams. And now that all of your panels are attached, it is time to actually make our pockets. So pin all of your panels down into that back panel, especially pinning the sides. And then what we will do is we will stitch in the ditch. So you are going to stitch along all of those seams, creating the pockets. Once you've 
sewn down all of the pockets, you will still have your side flaps from your outer edge pockets. And what you will do is you will trim your panel down, creating a straight edge on both sides. Now the top edge you can cut at whatever height you want. If you've decided to do applique along the top, maybe some cute little jingle bells, or you want to applique your family's last name, you just have to make sure you have enough space on that top panel for what you want. Personally, I felt like I did plenty of applique with all of my numbers, so I cut it with two and a half inches left above that top pocket. And now that you have squared up your entire panel, it is time to pin all of those side pockets in place and then sew a scant quarter inch seam along both edges, sealing those pockets in place. Now while you are sealing all of those pockets in place, you can also do this step at the same time or you can do it in two steps. What I did was I just flipped it over and on that top edge I grabbed two scrap charm squares. They are five inch by five inch squares. I folded them in half Half and pressed them, then laid the raw edge along the two top corners, pinning them in place. So when I sewed my scant quarter inch seams along both sides, I just kept going up and around and that sealed both of these triangles in place as well. These triangles will be used later on to hang up our advent calendar. So at this point, our advent calendar is looking really good. We literally just need to do one more thing and that is adding our binding. Now I have a tutorial that I will link in the description down below and that will show you how to add binding. But to prepare your binding, you will cut your strips at two and a half inches in width from selvage to selvage, trim those selvage edges off and then sew all of these strips together. Once you've sewn them together, then you can fold it in half and press it and then you will add your binding to your advent calendar. And this is how your charm square advent calendar will look when it's completely finished. I love how this one turned out and I just love the variety of fabrics throughout this entire project. And let me know in the comments down below, do you have ideas as to what you want to put in your advent calendar? At the end of this tutorial, I will share with you some of my ideas, but I would love to hear what your ideas are as well. All right, let's move on to the fat quarter tutorial. And now I'll quickly go through the differences between the fat quarter version and the charm square version. It's a few less seams, so you can get this project done just that little bit faster. What you'll do is you will stack six fat quarters, one on top of the other, and then you will cut one strip at five inches by 19 inches. So you will end up with six strips of different fabrics that nicely match because of course they came from the same fat quarter package. Then you will add all of these strips to their lining pieces of fabric the same way that we did with the charm squares. And once all of your strips have been sewn together to the lining, now it's time to create some guidelines. So you'll fold your panel in half and you will press that center fold in place and then you will open it up and take both outer edges and you will fold it so that the raw edge is overlapping that center fold half an inch and then press that outer fold as well. So you'll essentially press in three creases to your panels. After that, you can use a water soluble marking pen, you can use a friction pen and you can draw lines along those folds. If you find that the folds are not visible enough, for you to follow. Now it's at this point that you can add your applique numbers. I centered them within each of the squares that we just created, and then I stitched them in place, but I did fold the lining out of the way as I stitched my numbers in place. That way the lining can cover all of those extra stitches and whatever you're putting in your pockets won't get caught in some of those back stitches. And then it's time to attach all of your panels the same way that we did our charm square panels. One thing that I did a little different with my back panel for my fat quarter advent calendar is that I drew a center line down the center of my panel and that center line allowed me to make sure that my fat quarter center lines were all lining up as I attached each panel. And then once all of your panels have been sewn in place, it's time to sew in your pockets. So for myself, I took my ruler and I redrew all of my lines following 
following all of those creased press marks that I had previously made. And then I sewed seams along all of those marked lines. And this is how the finished fat quarter version turned out. Some of the pockets I will have things like candies in them and um, I might do like $5 gift cards to like the dollar store or wherever. I'm also going to add, and this one might not be super fun for my kids, but you know what? They don't need stuff, stuff, stuff all the time. So I bought these cards and I just found them at the craft store and I will link to some in the description below as well. And these little cards, I'm gonna write different things on. So one, I'm probably going to write, tonight we are going to drive around the city and look at Christmas lights. Um, another one might be, let's go to Tim Hortons and get some hot chocolate. So I think that adding little cards into the pockets can be a fun, way to change things up and actually have activities with your kids instead of just them getting more and more stuff. So I love the idea of an advent calendar. I just wanted to give you a few ideas so that you don't feel like you have to spend, spend, spend when it comes to your advent calendar. So I hope that you will make one of these advent calendars and leave me a comment in the description below. Are you going to make one? And if so, which one are you going to make? Are you going to applique the numbers or are you going to do a different method? I'd love to hear everything that you are gonna do for your own advent calendar and add some extra ideas down in the comments for me as far as what you think I should put in the advent calendar for my boys. I am always looking for more ideas. I hope that you guys have a very Merry Christmas and I will see you next time. Bye for now!